In this lecture, we will be learning about box plots. Box plots are visual methods to depict the distribution of a sample. So in the picture, in the center, we have a box. And that box depicts what we call the interquartile range. So the top represents the third quartile. And the bottom represents the first quartile, or the 25th percentile. Our axis is over here. So this is our numerical axis, think R1. And the idea of the box is that half of the data is occurring in between that first quartile and the third quartile. And this distance here, the height of this box, is what we call the length of the interquartile range. And the interval itself is the interquartile range. In addition, the median is usually drawn inside here and of course the median may not be in the middle it depends how the data is distributed in that interquartile range so here would be your median so 50 percent of the data is falling in here we then draw what are called whiskers and the whiskers do not represent data they're just dashed lines and it tells us something about how spread out the data is and the way the whiskers are drawn we'll start with the top so above we find the first data point that's at least one and a half times the width of this interquartile range above the top of the box so that first data point will be an outlier and we'll usually use either a plus or an open circle. So again, this would be the first point that's at least one and a half times the width of that interquartile range above that third quartile. That data point and all data points above it are drawn. And these are called the outliers or the upper outliers. The whiskers are these dashed lines drawn to that point. So again, up here, these are all the data points that extend beyond that first data point, which is the closest data point that is at least one and a half times that interquartile range width above the top of the box. For the bottom, we do the same thing. We do the mirror image. So we look for the first point that is at least a distance of one and a half times the width of that interquartile range below the bottom of the box. And so we draw that point and all those below it. And we draw whiskers, again, this dashed line to that point. So you may have data happening where these whiskers are. You will have data where these whiskers are, but they're, it's not depicted. And so the idea here is that you're getting the meat of the data, the middle half of the data, and then you're seeing something about how spread out it is, and you're explicitly seeing the outliers. And this is, this is a visual way of looking at a data set. Here is an example. This is generated using MATLAB. And this is a box plot of S&P 500 daily net returns during 2008 and 2009, so during the financial crisis. And so we see here's our box. Well, maybe we start here. We have our axis. So we're going from minus 10% up to about 13%. And we see this gives us our 
interquartile range. So 50% of our daily returns, our daily net returns are happening inside this box. This top of the box represents the third quartile or the 75th percentile. The bottom of the box represents the first quartile or the 25th percentile. And this red line in the middle is the median. And we see the median is a little bit above the midpoint of that box. Here we have our whiskers. So there are, there are data points in here that are not depicted. And then here we have our outliers. And we see we have some quite large outliers. We see we have net returns here above 10%, and we have some here that are close to negative 10%. And so this gives you an idea of what the data set is com composed of, really focusing on that interquartile spot. So your 25th to 75th percentile, and then these outliers. And so th this is what a box plot looks like. Again, this was generated using MATLAB And the function is just boxplot.m. To see how that works, let's look at an example in action. So here we have MATLAB open. And in an Excel file, we have daily net returns on the VIX index for the first nine months of 2020. So during the beginning of the COVID-19 crisis. And we have just those daily net returns in this column here. And notice that this is actually an Excel file, but it's a XLS extension, not the XLS X. And with that, so we have the name here, VIX returns 2021-9. And we can use a function called XLS read in MATLAB. So we do XLS read and we type the name of the file, which we have here VIX returns 2020.01.09.xls. And that loads all of the data from that file and that column in that file into the vector X. In MATLAB, box plots are quite simple to implement. You just take your box plot function and pass it either the vector or matrix of data, and it creates our figure. And we see here, we have a box plot for those daily net returns on the VIX, which is the volatility, implied volatility index for the S&P 500 for the first nine months of the corona pandemic. We see our axis here goes from about negative 25% to about 50%. So our interquartile range is depicted here, and we can see that 50% of the, these daily net returns are in the negative, probably negative four to positive 5% range. We see our whiskers and we see only one outlier on the lower side and we see a lot of outliers on the upper side. And if you haven't studied the VIX before, it's also called the fear, fear gauge and it tends to be behave inversely to market prices so that if market prices are crashing this tends to spike and so in this COVID-19 crisis we have a lot of large daily net returns and you can really see that depicted here because you see this large set of positive outliers and a small set of negative outliers which really shows you how this thing had a lot of upward moves. The VIX had a lot of upward moves during this time period. So this is a quick way to get a look at a data set, get a feel for how the inner half of the data 
is behaving and then where the outliers lie.